Rode is a very innovative company. They've come out with some game-changing equipment like the Rodecaster Pro 1, the Rode Wireless Go devices, and now the Streamer X. Now, I've owned my fair share of Rode equipment to include the Rode NT-USB, and I also have the Rodecaster Pro 2. But this Streamer X is a little bit different, and I really like having it on my desk. And we're gonna talk about some of the features of this device, why I really like it, but I'm not ready to let this go from my desk because I am having some issues with this. When Rode introduced the Rodecaster Pro 1, it really changed the game, especially for someone like me that wanted an audio interface on their desk, but wanted a little bit more flexibility to control multiple audio sources, to do mix minus, a lot of the complex things that you would need a traditional audio mixer to do. The Rodecaster really could do everything and it just looked a lot better. And if you were doing a podcast, this was probably the machine you most wanted because you knew that creating your podcast would just be that much easier. But now Rode has started to introduce devices that I really like, like this Streamer X, because not only are we talking audio, but now we're talking video. And I wanna walk through this setup, how I'm using the Streamer X and some of the quirks that I have with it because I'm not quite ready to let this go from my desk. Now for this particular setup, I primarily use the Rodecaster as my audio interface for Clubhouse conversations, for recording videos in OBS, Zoom, Google Meets, those types of things. Nothing really complex. But one of the things about this device is it's a little bit larger than I want for this desk and it takes up a big footprint. So having the new Streamer X definitely is smaller and gives me more of my desk space back. So let's walk through some of the features of the Streamer X. This device gives me everything that I need. I'm able to connect my XLR microphone. I'm using the Shure SM7B. I don't need any additional preamps. I don't need any additional fat heads or cloud lifters straight into the Streamer X and I'm getting the volume levels that I really, really want from this microphone. I also have my headphone jack plugged into here for my Shure headphones and I'm using the HDMI input for my mirrorless camera to bring in the video feed. Now, this device has been marketed a lot for gamers and I'm not one of them. So if you're a gamer, I apologize for the rest of the video, but I am gonna walk you through why I use this device as a content creator. The audio input is a combo jack that allows you to connect your quarter inch or your XLR input into it. Now, along with that, you could also connect a headset into this unit. You just wanna make sure that you're selecting the right option using the dial on the Streamer X. Now, a third way that you can even connect audio is by using the Bluetooth functionality if you're using devices like the Rode Wireless Go 2 or the Rode Wireless Me setup, which I'm using the Rode Wireless 2 to record this video right now. Really great product from Rode again. Now, one of the things I really like about the audio dial is the fact that you can actually look at the color to see how much volume you're increasing or decreasing. So as you turn it to the right, you'll actually see the color increase to the right and decrease to the left as you're decreasing the volume. And on the right hand side, the same thing with the headphone volume, you can visually see you increasing the volume and decreasing the volume. By pressing down on the microphone button, you're able to navigate through those three different options of the type of microphone input that you have. And when you press down on the headphone volume, you're able to mute out the headphone volume for that time until you press it again and it will re-enable it. Below the microphone button is one of the best features of the device. It's an easy touchpad to mute your microphone. In some cases, you just can't quite get to the mute button in your software. So having it on a physical device, just pressing it down, seeing the bright red button lets you know that your microphone is muted. You also have the option to enable and disable your video by using the touchpad as well. The clear indication lets you know that your video feed is not going to that program and you can re-enable it just with the click of a button. So having quick access on physical buttons is a plus for me. Now over to the right you have smart pads and these smart pads already come with pre-loaded sounds. 
So definitely take advantage of these different sound effects that are already there. And you do have the ability to customize these sound effects. Not only do you have four pads, but if you use the left and right button, you can access the additional smart pads to access those additional sounds and customize those as well. So the setup of the device is relatively simple. Connect your microphone, your headphone, and take the USB-C out of port one and into my computer. You do have the option to connect this to two computers, but I only have one for this setup. But connecting it to my computer is a little easier said than done because this is where the quirks happen. So with my existing setup, I had my Rodecaster Pro 1 connected into the USB-C port on the hub of my Mac Mini. Now, this worked great. However, when I tried to take my Streamer X and plug it into the same USB-C port, this is where the problem happened. It didn't recognize it on the computer. I downloaded the Rode Central app and just could not get the computer to recognize the Streamer X. So you might say, hey, Monty, just take your Mac Mini and use one of the USB-C ports directly on the Mac Mini. Well, here's the issue with that. One of the USB-C ports is being used for my 49-inch monitor, and the other USB-C port is being used to connect to the hub. And the hub has some vital equipment connected to it, my mouse and my keyboard. So I had to take out the mouse and the keyboard and put it into another USB hub and that way it would free up the USB-C cable directly on the Mac Mini. Then I took the Streamer X, plugged it directly into the Mac Mini, and then it began to work. Well, almost. It still wasn't being recognized all the way 100% with the Rode app. When I finally did get it to connect, the first thing I noticed was that a firmware needed to be installed, which is not atypical. When I get new equipment, I'm used to updating the software and the firmware. However, the firmware was unsuccessful in installing. So I'm not sure why the firmware is not installing. So what I did was I took the talents over to the Windows computer on my laptop over there, tried the exact same process there and still not able to update the firmware through the app. So not sure why the firmware is not working, but actually connecting it to the computers works just fine. I was able to connect, bring up OBS, bring in the video feed, bring in the audio feed on the Mac computer and it works just fine. Did the exact same thing on my Windows laptop, brought it into OBS, image, audio works just fine over there as well but just trying to connect it to the Rode app just isn't working. So it could be hardware error or it could be user error. And even as a techie, I still have user error problems sometimes. I don't always read the instruction manual. So if you guys have the Streamer X or Rode, if you're watching this video, definitely I could use some assistance in trying to get the firmware updated and talking to the software. So having used the Streamer X for about 24 hours, I have been able to test it in a few platforms and programs and everything works well. Now, I'm not quite ready to get rid of the Rodecaster 1 from this desk and may even swap it out because there are some things that I miss as a person that loves to see what is going on. The Rodecaster 1 allows me to see the audio levels. It allows me to see exactly what's going on. And I can even do some customizations directly on the device. Whereas right now, because I can't access the software, I'm not able to have that customization in the Unify app or in the Rode Central app. So that is a drawback for me right now, but hopefully we can get that resolved in some future videos. Now, I will be talking more about this device and showing it in different scenarios on Amazon. So if you're not following me on Amazon, definitely check me out over there. Now, if this video has been helpful or you wanna learn a little bit more, make sure you check out the next video right here on the channel.